If you've used our WPF data grid and our tree list in the past, you know that it ships with a variety of data filtering and record search options. In our version 20.1 release, we've extended filtering capabilities and user interface feedback via our filter panel. In this tutorial, I'm going to review major grid and tree list filter options and then show you how we've improved the filter panel. A quick note for those who want to follow along. If you have our version 20.1 distribution, Simply launch our WPF data grid demo and navigate to the filtering sample via our demo navigator. To keep this video as short as possible, I'm only going to focus on the grid, but please remember that the features described here will apply to our tree list as well. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, I've got our filtering demo ready to go. The first feature I'll describe is incremental search. This particular search option was built for read-only columns. If you allow editing within your grid or tree list cells, we have other search options available. Incremental search allows users to move focus to a column cell and enter search criteria via the keyboard. I'm going to move focus to the product name column and enter SIR. As you can see, the grid automatically highlights records that match this specific criterion. Now take a look at the scroll bar. As you can see, our grid scroll bar uses markers to identify located records within the record list. This is an incredibly cool feature. Let's say your app includes a list of movie songs. Let's then say you initiate a search for film lyrics that include the phrase supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Since this is an uncommon phrase, you may only locate a few records. Because our scroll bar marks the location of records that match the search string, you or your users can quickly navigate to the record without the need to scroll the entire list. Yes, I realize it's next to impossible to type in supercalifragilisticexpialidocious without making a mistake, but chances are you'll find the same number of records by entering supercalif. The bottom line is this, our intelligent scroll bar makes it super easy to get where you want to go. Okay, on to the next search option the grid and tree lists built-in search panel. To demonstrate this feature, I'll go ahead and press the magnifying glass at the top of the grid to activate the search field. This option allows you to search for records across all visible grid columns. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. I'll enter two text strings, Sir and Lander. By default, the search panel filters records, or said differently, it removes records from the list that don't match a given search criteria. If you prefer to keep all records visible, you can configure the grid and tree list to highlight matching records instead. If you go with this option, your users can navigate the list via buttons displayed in the search panel. Notice that the search field displays total records found and your position within the set. Once again, let me mention the scroll bar. Notice all the markers for this particular search string. As you can probably imagine, more specific search criteria will lead to fewer markers on the scroll bar. Had this been a movie song list and I had entered Super Caliph, the scroll bar would have marked a few positions in the record list. Our WPF data grid and tree list both give you fine-grained control over search options. If you prefer to limit search to direct matches, you can do so with these. All right, let me move on to our auto filter row demo and demonstrate how it works. As you can see, when using auto filter row, our grid and tree list display an empty row atop the grid. This empty row, or auto filter row, allows users to enter values and specify search criteria to filter information displayed in the grid or tree list. Really simple, really intuitive. All right, we're on a roll. Let's move on to yet another data filtering option. In this instance, use of filter UI elements alongside the grid and tree list. I'll select the checked list sample to demonstrate. In this sample, we've connected our filter UI elements to the grid and are using the country column to filter data. Once connected, the filter UI element automatically displays data from the appropriate grid column. It even displays the total number of matching values. We give you a ton of different filter UI elements to choose from. Here's a sample that uses a checked tree list to organize records. Of course, these UI elements can be customized. You are always in total control. I hope you're still with me, as I've got a couple more filtering and search features to show you. Now I'm going to move to our most popular filtering option, Excel style filtering. 
This particular feature was patterned after Excel. Its capabilities mirror those of Excel, so I won't spend too much time on this demo. I can initiate Excel style search operations by clicking the filter icon inside the desired column header. Once clicked, the grid and tree list will automatically display our filter drop down window. Here you can specify both filter rules or enter filter values. Let me demonstrate on screen. A quick note about this filter drop down. Filter values can be grouped as needed. We automatically group values for date columns, but you can manually apply grouping to any column. In this specific example, we've grouped data within the Filter Values tab and are using values from two different columns, Trademark and Model Name. Okay, time to demonstrate new features we'll ship in version 20.1, specifically changes to our incredible filter panel. Regardless of the filter or search option used, be it Excel style filtering or Auto Filter Row, a user's search criteria can be displayed in the filter panel located at the bottom of the grid or tree list. As you can see, the filter panel visually describes a user's current filter. In this instance, I've asked the grid to display all records with a model price between $25,000 and $80,000 and sales date between January 1st, 2020 and February 2nd, 2020 and trademark of BMW and the model name X3. If you've used older versions of our WPF grid or tree list, you'll immediately notice visual enhancements to the filter panel. We now group filters by columns and display these values as tokens. This allows you to remove unwanted column filters with ease. For instance, I can highlight the last two tokens in my filter and delete them from my criteria list. Of course, you can temporarily disable a filter by unchecking the checkbox that precedes the filter criteria list. If you'd like to remove the filter entirely, you can press the delete button at the rightmost edge of the filter panel. Should you wish, you can recall previously executed filters via our recently used filters button. As you can see, once I press this button, I'm presented with a list of recently used filters. I can select an item in the list to recall previous search criteria. Excellent. If you'd like to edit an existing filter or create more complex search criterion, you can simply press the edit button to activate our filter editor. As you can see, the filter editor gives you total control over criteria construction, and it's simple enough for most users to master. I'll cover this particular UI element in greater detail in a future video. I hope you've enjoyed my dive into filtering with our WPF data grid and tree list. I think we've improved the filter panel quite a bit and tokens should make criteria customization much easier for your users. And that's it for this video. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. And remember to subscribe to this channel for more great DevExpress training videos. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.